You sad to be leaving here a little bit early? Yeah, we paid for two nights and we're cutting our time short. We checked the weather real quick with the Iridium. We were able to get it in on our phone. And there's some bad weather rolling in tomorrow, squalls with winds up to 30 knots. So rather than travel in that tomorrow, we decided to not relax, chill, enjoy, and drink, and motor two and a half hours south to Stanley. But yeah. we'll have phone service. It'll be upwind. Let's weigh anchor and head south. Isn't that cool? Yeah. We're going to get everything out of the dinghy. We're sailing to an another amazing destination in the Exumas. Yours looks way better than mine. <laughs> Sailing, diving, and more. Are you ready? I love these beautiful calm days. Super thick asparagus. We're having the same issue again. You know, it's on and it automatically turns off. And of course, we'll have maintenance issues again. Let's do it. There's a leak. First yeah. step of the emergency procedure is... Welcome to Lazy Gecko Sailing. Looking for something exciting, free, and real? If so, you found the right place. Meet Calypso, our floating home. It's not working. We're sailing her all over and taking you for the ride. Please click on subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun. I usually do my chart plotting on the iPad here with Navionics. I trust my Explorer charts more than this. Uh, but I like the way this thing has features to be able to do the routing. What's got going on in there? Oh, you don't want to look in there. It's right. a disaster. I'm just going to work on dinner. So originally, if we were going to stay, we'd have to turn the generator on because I really need the microwave for our potatoes. Put them in this potato bag. If they all don't fit, then you can just wrap them in a wet paper towel. Microwave them like four minutes at a time, and as they start to soften, I take them out. But if we stayed there, I would have had to use the generator for that. And now that we're going more underway, I'm going to do it. Running the engines, that provides the power. I don't have to use the generator. And I'm also going to do asparagus, and that takes 20 minutes in the convection oven. So I'm sure the captain's happy that I don't have to use the generator. Yeah, that's because we have, we have put the new Balmar 614s on, and they charge the house bank while we're going. I'll start like marinating the steaks, prepping everything, and then right before we get there, while we're searching for an anchorage and stuff, I can just start it all. We are going upwind, but it's so calm. It's like upwind is blowing like five or something. So the seats are at zero. Very, very calm motor down to Daniel Key today. The ocean is pretty much empty today. I saw a couple boats in the beginning, but late season, so a lot of people have already left the Bahamas. They want to get away from like, the hurricane season and stuff like that, so a little bit empty, which makes it nice because the anchors are a little bit more empty. I'm going to use our clamp that you broke. Yeah. That sucks. Uh, we just got into the Bahamas, and Jeremiah got into our electronics area, and I heard something fall, and it was our GoPro mount like the clamp one where you can move it all around yeah. it's our most used thing as far as electronics i'd say right i super glued that one together so it'll work yeah but so i'm gonna gopro this oh you're gonna gopro uh your cooking yeah all right kind of cool have a good time Cooking aboard Calypso is a favorite hobby of mine. Tonight's dinner is steak, asparagus, and sweet potatoes. The downtime during a passage is perfect for prepping meals. I love these beautiful calm days. Then I can come up on the bow and enjoy it. Too. Okay, perfect. So the potatoes are 
cooked enough and then as we're grilling the steaks on the barbecue tonight I will wrap up the potatoes in some foil throw them on the grill and they'll be like nice and crispy and soft on the inside now I'm going to start the asparagus in the convection oven so I did my potatoes first because they're gonna go back on the grill and get you're reheated I guess but once I wrap them in the foil they'll stay pretty hot we have super thick asparagus We dropped the hook just off Staniel Key and fired up the grill for the steaks. Dinner is served. Oh yeah. Looking spectacular. I think everything turned out. Oh, fly. I know, awesome. I've been smacking them all day. Everything turned out awesome like you liked? Yeah. What? Here dad, you can just have that. Pump the jam. Pump the jam. We saw another girl about Reese's age, so we're thinking they might be able to hang out. We'll see. He's nervous. He's always nervous, but it always turns out to be the most amazing experience ever. That's so true. Reese has made some great friends along this journey, just like us. Just landed the dinghy at the grotto. We came here before, we weren't able to go outside, so hopefully today will be a different story. Are we ready to do this? Yep. Plus, Reese was a little younger then. We had really bad weather and it was rough, and I think he's about three, so now he's six. Yeah, all the system going there. <laughs> He got his MOB. All right, let's do it. The Thunderball Grotto is an underwater cave system in the Exuma Islands. The entrance is hidden, so you need to enter at low tide in order to see it. Otherwise, you need dive equipment. We're at low tide, slack tide, so entering was pretty simple. We really didn't know what to expect. It was amazing to enter this beautiful hidden gem. Check that out, Reese. Uh -huh. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I'm kind of panicking because water's getting my snacks and stuff. Don't panic. You might have seen the grotto on film, as it's been featured in the movies Splash, Into the Blue, and James Bond. Is there? <laughs> One of the coolest parts is how the sunlight reflects into the cave, illuminating both above and below the water's surface with a kaleidoscope effect. We loved taking it all in. It does look getting to rip in here from what I understand. In the past, some have jumped in from the top, but it looked like they've secured the way up. Swam back to the dinghy. We're headed back to our floating home. Back on Calypso. Oh yeah. That was pretty cool. That was awesome. It was freaking packed. One of the things with it is that um, everybody has to go at slack tide, so all the like you know all the little charter boats, all that stuff, they all show up at slack tide. But what did you guys think? Good. Good. How was your mask? <laughs> is it leaking? I, I need my tube. Yeah, and your snorkel. Yeah, yeah we, we gotta get. Mask. Yeah, we gotta get a new. Tube. Yeah, he's he's just now getting into the snorkeling stuff, so we're gonna get him some if we can find some scuba pro we will, but how about you? Did yeah. you enjoy it in there? Yeah, I loved it. Mask, fins work great. I'm happy we wore them. I saw people without fins and it's a little it's bit the of the current. Crack. Yeah. You know, so it was great. Beautiful. Yeah. Um a couple years ago there was a little bit more sea life than yeah. there was now, but so they say well also they say because it was really it was crowded, you know. Yeah, so the fish scurry away. I'm either gonna make hamburgers or we're gonna go to the yacht club and get dinner and drinks. Yes, Daniel Key has like a little bar called the yacht club. I'm going to get everything out of the dinghy and we'll make that call. All right. Disembarked. Boom. Done. Here, Mom. Bye, Bye Reese. 
We have a fair amount of gear on Calypso, such as dive gear. That means a fair amount of upkeep too. We try to keep our equipment in the best shape possible in a pretty harsh environment. If I had realized it was like an underwater experience, I would have brought the dive lights. Right. Yeah, I thought you knew that. No, I thought it was going to be just like water you kind of are in and then it's the cave. No, I knew it was underwater. There's plenty of light, so like that is pretty. Yeah. We gotta stop filming a little bit. We're always filming stuff that, that, that we could be enjoying. We do enjoy. What are you talking stop. about? Mom and Dad both said, no, I'm just going to enjoy it. We stopped filming while we were in there and enjoyed it. Yes, but we need to do it more often. All our salty stuff goes here, and then we can rinse it down there. Yeah. He's the one that usually rinses it down. Yeah, try to conserve water, but that's one thing that's great about a fresh water wash down. You can really preserve your stuff, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, so. are you rinsing it down now? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a quick rinse off. Having a fresh water wash down on the back of the boat is amazing for cleaning gear and kids. A lot of times we'll just bathe him or whatever. Uh, then he just goes off to go get dry. And then I'll just spray everything off. These things have lasted years. I don't know, three or four years now. As soon as we get out of the water, we always rinse it off with fresh water to get that salt off there. Reese's MOB device, I always make sure I spray that out real good. This is a, like an automatic deploying one, but because he doesn't have an inflatable life jacket, uh, which I don't really trust for him because sometimes they don't work. He has been trained how to deploy it himself. So yeah, if he was, he was unconscious, that'd be bad, but he'd float. So I'd rather him float unconscious than, and not be able to deploy the MOB than a life jacket not go off when, you know, when he's unconscious. There's always some type of give or take. I'll spray myself off. I wore this shirt today because I got severely sunburned. I don't know how you put sunscreen on like two, I know. two or it three times. We sailing, it's just beating it. Oh man. All right, mom's turn. All right. That's it. <laughs> I don't want to touch my yours face. Looks, yours looks way better than mine. <laughs> I can't see. The next day, we continued south to another remote anchorage. Well, it looks like I'll be doing propane maintenance. Ten, yeah, you're. That's funny, I was just thinking about that earlier. You're like, I'm gonna work on putting a video together tomorrow. I was just thinking, nope, we'll be working on propane tomorrow now. It's moments like these that make cruising memorable. Yeah. <laughs> I asked you if you wanted a beer. Yeah. You have a table to sit it on. It's still not up to temperature. Any wind at all, this grill allows the heat to, so like the wind goes right through and takes all the heat right out the back. We're trying to grill on a windy night. And uh, it's, of course it's coming from like the perfect, if you go to the other side of the boat, like if this is mounted over there, there's no wind. But just with currents pushing and the wind's blowing, it's like blowing 15 knots right on it. I'm trying to block the wind to keep the heat in, but it's not really working because it's just going right around the side and taking it right out. I believe it's off. Is that thing making a noise? No. No. All right, so I hope you guys off again. Oh my gosh, what's going on with this thing? Well, the LP gas thing is shit itself, so I had to replace that, but we need to figure something else out for dinner. What do you want for me? Um, LP gas to work? Well, that's gonna take like a day for me to fix. Is it off? Yes. Well, I think it, LP gas will work long enough for me to use it down here with these things. You can try, but I don't think so. And then I'll cook the hamburgers in the convection oven. Okay, how long is that gonna take? Probably 15 minutes. All right, I see you have all the battery power up, but okay, I'll put it on here. So we had this issue before where LP gas kept turning off and it just like corrected itself. And now we're having the same issue again. You know, it's on and it automatically turns off. But that combined with the wind is just like a no-go for burgers. So I'm hoping it works long enough for me to cook the rest of our dinner and I'll do the burgers in the convection oven. I'm not gonna say anything because I don't want to jinx us, but you were supposed to cook dinner while I was working out, and the grill went to crap, so now I'm doing working out and cooking. We have an LP gas system out here. It's not like a self, like, censoring for a leak type LP gas system. You can hear it, it's going bad. See, it's on right now. But basically, this LP gas solenoid right down there, the black piece, uh, yeah, there. Right there, down there. There's a button inside, you just turn it on and off. 
it's just like dam for the propane south propane from being connected it's automatically it's flipping it's not like it's a there's a leak we're maintaining pressure and everything that thing has been intermittently going bad and now it's going bad last time it messed up on me intermittent i figured it's going to happen so i went ahead and bought the replacement i'm going to wire this sucker in probably tomorrow as long as this problem persists i'm gonna work on this and get it put in but not tonight no. not tonight there's the thunderstorms in the area i don't feel like messing with propane tonight no the green beans are cooked yeah you know, this is what it did that one time like it did this you can just turn it off and on so if you were to get a flare up right here first yeah. step of the emergency procedure is push the off button and it, sec it secures the, the lp the propane yeah basically that thing is just flipping off but it's happening out there so yeah. I'll, I'm not going to replace this unit, although I, I do have that unit, but I'm not going to replace it if I don't have to. I'll just keep it as another spare. And we made it, honey. Nice job, buddy. Have you ever seen these? This is a first. I don't know if I'm doing them right. It's like a pike push-up. It's really hard. Have you done those in the Marine Corps, uh, honey? I don't know. I'm sure somewhere along the way. Oh my gosh. Four. How many are you going to do? Twelve. That's pretty good. It's my third set. Oh, nice. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Yeah, your shoulders are getting to work out. That's nice. Looks good, honey. Thank you. Coming up on the Lazy Geckos. I'm heard over. This is David Copperfield's island. A different size bracket on here. Oh. Dead low tide. I feel like it's, it's worse. This is a little check valve. I'm the um, boat chef. Did you know that? No. <laughs> Propane system working. Thank you. I've never heard one you can get in. All right, you gotta go for a swim. And let's go down. Want more? Check us out at lazygeckos.net. Remember, patrons can get complimentary access. You can also visit our Vimeo channel. The link is below. Don't forget to click subscribe to get all of the fun. See you next week.